Okay. Pleasure area. Right between the ears. The crew cut, huh? Wally here. He was thrown out by his owner because he was peeing all over the place. Persians sometimes have that kind of problem. He's about as far as you can get from feral cats, I'll tell you. Feral means wild. Cats, any cat, if he doesn't want to be seen, won't be seen. Feral cats are very, very, very talented. They used to say there are tens of thousands of feral cats in New York City. Now, many people are saying hundreds hundreds of thousands of feral cats. You don't see them because they hunt at twilight. They gravitate towards dark, small places. It's uh, preservation of the species. I've already got the traps set up. They've been there for a couple of days, so the cats get used to seeing them. And Shayna, who we're working with, she's been putting the cat food in the trap, so they're actually been eating right out of the traps. I work nine to five, Monday through Friday, so unless it's a really big special job like this, trapping is limited to the weekends or the evenings. Everybody's got some pet project or pet area that they would be most interested in helping. And for us, it just so happens it, it's cats. You know, there's a lot of people who don't really give cats a second thought, but we're interested in them and their welfare. I mean, that's kind of an effect of just living in this neighborhood and being surrounded by so many for so long. You want the traps to not stick out, so they're just kind of parallel to larger structures like the fence. Yeah, they got to do this thing where they sniff around for a while but they'll go in eventually. Feral cats are usually well-groomed and fluffy and look nice, and it's the stray cats that have been kicked out of their homes or whatever that are like all scraggly and dirty because they don't know how to fend for themselves in the wild, but these cats are all like really beautiful. Oh, oh I, I made a trail of sardines. Oh, here's some more. Hi, kitties. Up until early 1990s, the primary method for trying to control street cats was to remove them and euthanize them. It wasn't until 15, 20 years ago that we started to do this new method and actually start to see some progress in the numbers going down. What you're doing is you're trapping the cats. Many of them are feral, so they can't just be picked up. They actually have to be trapped. Then they're spayed or neutered. They're vaccinated against rabies. And then they're returned to their original location, where ideally there's a caretaker there who's going to feed and provide them with shelter. And if you repeat that method for all the cat colonies in the same neighborhood, their population will slowly go down over time. Because they're basically wild animals, like they know instinctively not to struggle because it just is a waste of energy. Feral cats think of themselves as prey. They behave as if any creature would like to catch and kill them and eat them. There's no difference anatomically, biologically, between Chumley here and a feral cat. It's in their mind. Chumley loves his home. A feral doesn't want to be in a home. A feral thinks of himself as either predator or prey. Oh shit. Come here. Can you hear that? Yeah. It's hard to hear over the bird. What? Oh my god. Oh no. Yep, look at this. I eyes are crusted shut. You've been here the whole time? There's only one? Huh. 
Hi, Lucy. Please don't bother the kitten. Hello. Sometimes I don't know what this is going on. There we go. Yeah. Let's see how, how much she weighs. Yeah, 10 ounces. I would have thought she would be closer to a pound by now. Um, how many cats do you have? Well, right now, there are 11 adult cats in the house and now five kittens. There are your eyes. That wasn't so hard, now was it? Oh, she just burped. Meanwhile, we should set up the ferals upstairs. Because we're gonna be changing this stuff like twice a day. Goes fast. Okay, so then we have all the newspaper. Oh, I left the divider downstairs, didn't I? Okay, okay buddy. AM New York. I mean, Metro works too, but it, it has staples. Once you've seen a lot of really horrible things with cats, then it kind of toughens you up a little bit. Trying to pretend like we could just make them disappear, which is usually what the implication is when we're talking about trap and kill, is, you know, the alternate stance. Cats really do kill birds, and they kill birds in significant numbers. But they kill way more mammals than that. They kill 6.3 to like 22 billion mammals a year. It's a lot. It's not their fault, but it's something that we need to do something about. The New York City Audubon is not in favor of TNR. So what are the alternatives? Well, if you can't bring the cats indoors and keep them indoors, an alternative would be to euthanize them. Newsflash, we are not living in the forest primeval anymore. Knowing that it's man's fault that we have so many cats out here, then to say either they've got to be in the house and confined or we've got to round them all up and euthanize them. That's as a race, man is not taking the responsibility for his actions. Oh, she's purring. That's cute. Oh, yeah, she's hungry. Uh, look at the ears go. All right. Oh, there's a van. Hey, morning. Yes, yes, you see it. All right, yes. I have 17 cats in the house. The three from the other trapper, that'll be 20. And then Nicole, she had 11. There's a good chance that Amanda, the other trapper, was successful as well. Oh, that's Mongo. Yeah. But this one, this is the best. Martha, did you see this guy? Look at the, how big his paws are. Look at you. Oh, he's not feral. He's like right up front. I think, I think it's 31. This is the, the maximum that they can take. Uh, these are just the females. We released the males yesterday because the males don't need as much recovery time. So are we ready to release? Ready to release. Okay, pop this open. And see now, as I suspected, facing the wrong way. There we go. Oh, right through. Yeah, that looks familiar. All right. I need some there. And life goes on. Now that they've been returned, it's the ongoing maintenance of the colony that is going to be the real important factor here. Uh, Shayna's roommate, Nola, found three more kittens. So we said, okay, we'll come and pick them up. We're driving home and she calls and she's like, I found more kittens. And for a while, you're trying to match it up. You're like, okay, who belongs to who? But in a real feral colony situation, the mother cats, when they have kittens, they all basically share the kittens. We have a small room upstairs that we set aside for this, and we put the two lactating cats in there, and we put seven of the kittens in with them. As expected, she took right to them and immediately let them all nurse and has been keeping them clean and everything and watching out for them. If we hadn't gotten these kittens, that colony would double in size in a couple of months.
At least we can feel like we really helped stabilize that one location. It's just one block, but it's still significant, I think. New York's a cat city. You don't have to walk a cat. And people need the animals in order to stay sane so they can have a couple of cats. I always encourage people to get more than one. I think three is the ideal number. If someone should pass away, nobody's left alone. There's still two. So you get a new third. That's the perfect, the perfect cycle.